Good evening. My name is Maureen Dumas, and I am the Vice President of Advancement and University Relations here at Johnson & Wales University. Thank you for joining us for tonight's exclusive program, A Path Forward, a forum with Tyler Florence. We are thrilled to bring you this intimate conversation with renowned chef, TV celebrity, entrepreneur, and JWU alum, Tyler Florence. We are grateful for his commitment to give back to the university that prepared him to follow his passion and achieve success in the culinary world. Not only is Tyler a proud JWU alum, he is also Johnson & Wales University's first food entrepreneur in residence. I'm thrilled to announce that he will be leading the JWU Future Food All-Stars Challenge, a student competition hosted by the Larry Friedman Center for Entrepreneurship and the College of Food Innovation and Technology. Students across all Johnson & Wales University colleges will form teams to develop a business model and product plan and compete for the opportunity to pitch their ideas to established investors. The winning team will receive a cash prize to support their businesses and their ventures. We are excited to see our student submissions and the work they will accomplish under Chef Florence's tutelage. We are pleased to have University Chancellor Mim Rooney with us this evening. In 2018, the Johnson & Wales Board of Trustees selected Mim to become the third chancellor in the university's history following her decade-long career that began at her former campus in Charleston, South Carolina, where Chef Florence attended. 2020 was quite a year for Johnson & Wales and the institutions of higher education. Throughout, MIM, throughout it, MIM has provided strong and steady leadership, facing the challenges of COVID-19 and guiding the university as we move forward during a most transformational period in our 106-year history. Please join me in welcoming Chancellor Rooney. Thank you, Maureen, and good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here tonight for the program with Chef Tyler Florence. By now, we are all aware of the devastating impact the COVID-19 pandemic has had on the food and hospitality industry, and it hasn't been easy. While we are optimistic for a swift rebound, the timeline to return to normal seems uncertain, but with uncertainty, there always comes opportunity, right? When we developed University's current strategic plan almost five years ago, we certainly did not predict a global pandemic would force the industries for which we are known, food, hospitality, and tourism, to reimagine virtually every aspect of how business is conducted. It's been a tough one. Little did we know, that uh, Johnson & Wells plans for the College of Food Innovation and Technology to prepare students to explore the role of food in everyday life with a focus on science, sustainability, and safety would intersect with this critical time when the skills needed to adapt and innovate have never been more highly sought. At JWU, we continue to build on our long history of being innovative and an entrepreneurial institution deliver an exceptional education experience that translates to success after college, positioning our students to lead in their chosen field. What better way to do this than tapping into the expertise of our alumni? We are excited to welcome back to JWU, Chef Tyler Florence is JWU's inaugural food entrepreneur in residence. Chef Florence, who attended JWU at our Charleston, South Carolina campus, which just happens to be where I got my start at Johnson & Wells, is an inspiring example to all of our students across every discipline at Johnson & Wells, that if you put in the work, this institution will give you the keys to a bright future. And this new collaboration with his alma mater shows just how connected our graduates, especially those who reach the pinnacle of success, remain to our institution. This is an exciting partnership that really illustrates the entrepreneurial spirit and industry connections for which JWU is known. We are so pleased that Chef Florence will bring the next generation of leaders eager to make their mark on the world, just as he so successfully has done with their Johnson & Wales degree. Tonight, Chef Florence will share the ways in which he was able to successfully transition his own businesses during the pandemic, and while building media, content, and partnerships with others was so critical during this time. He will also discuss his history of effectively launching brands in a variety of industries and provide valuable takeaways for attendees to position themselves in a post-pandemic world. 
We are grateful for Chef Lawrence's generosity and commitment to give back to Johnson & Wales University, a university that prepared him to follow his passion and achieve success in a culinary world. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. I'll now turn the program over to Assistant Dean of Culinary Relations and Special Projects for the College of Food Innovation and Technology, and that's Chef T.J. Deladon. T.J. Thank you, Chancellor Rooney, um, and welcome to our alumni, and uh, welcome to our Mary, uh, Mary and Gertrude Society members uh, that are joining us tonight. Um, I am honored to be with you all this evening. Um, tonight uh, will be a rich discussion um, and valuable, and will be full of rich discussion and valuable takeaways. Um, and I want everyone to partake. I want everyone to participate and be involved. So if you feel inclined to ask a question tonight, please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen and just type that uh, question in there anytime throughout the program, anytime throughout the evening. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to collate those questions and we'll pose them towards, uh, towards the end of the program. Um, it, it really is my honor, and I am thrilled to introduce our guest um, and fellow JWU alum, Chef Tyler Florence. Um, and I'd like to share a few words about uh, Chef Florence, if you'll allow me. Um, Tyler is a 24-year Food Network veteran uh, who has captivated millions of viewers on numerous hit shows. Um, his, his reach and influence extends well beyond his cooking shows, as he's authored 16 cookbooks and built an ever-expanding ever -expanding business across many platforms. He's a Johnson Wells graduate, class of 1994, and was awarded an honorary doctorate uh, by the university in 2004. Um, he's a two-time James Beard Award nom uh, nominee for Best Chef West Coast, West Coast, launching his award-winning flagship restaurant, Wayfair Tavern, which is absolutely phenomenal, um, over a decade ago. Tyler Florence Fresh, his outpost in San Francisco International Airport, also serves uh, the best of his signature dishes. His upcoming San Francisco restaurant project, Miller & Lux, will be a uh, West Coast classic steakhouse, um, which is just set to open this fall in the new Chase, um, uh, Chase Arena, home of the Golden State Warriors, go Steph. Um, in 2017, Tyler created a full stack production company, Monarch Collective. Uh, his insatiable quest for what's current and interesting um, in the food and lifestyle space has always uh, positioned him at the forefront of new trends, um, gaining him a large and engaged social media following. He resides in Corte Madera, California with his wife and children. So please, without further, <clears throat> without further ado, uh, please join me in wel welcoming uh, Chef Tyler Florence. Chef, how are you? Good to see you. Hey, what's happening, Chef? How are you? I'm doing, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'll tell you what, it's been, uh, it's been a year. I think it's been a year for, for everybody and uh, across the country, across the globe. But I will say this, Chef, before we get started, I have never in my time as a student, uh, my time as a faculty member and my time as a, as a staff member. I've never been more proud to be a Wildcat than I am this year. Um, the, the stewardship from our leadership and, and, and the drive to get us through this, to keep our students whole and to, and to keep them in, in class on campus, especially at the College of Food Innovation and Technology. I'll tell you what, unprecedented and unmatched. So I'm doing, I'm doing well. We have about three weeks left till the end of the, uh, uh, end of the semester, the end of the school year. So um, I'm, I'm thrilled about it. I, I certainly am. How are, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I, I, I think um, hanging in there is sort of like <laughs> the new phrase, you know, it's like those old posters where you see the kind of cat hanging <laughs> onto a, a branch. I feel like everyone's doing that professionally. Uh, and, and we, we've made the most of it. I mean, we, we've, you know, we've, um, you know, uh, learned a lot about perseverance and what we're capable of doing. Uh, we've certainly grown uh, through out of necessity of just having to figure out how to diversify our portfolio and, and try to take as few L's as possible and try to win a couple on the way. Uh, but it's definitely been a very dynamic and, and earth shattering year in a lot of ways, especially yeah. in our industry. Our, our industry is is suffering on so many different levels, but it looks like we're kind of coming to the end of it. Uh, I just got my second vaccine shot, uh, you know, two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, feel great. And uh, looking forward to a brighter day. But I gotta tell you, I really like your wine wall. I feel like <laughs> I like I, I got some stuff here. I don't have the big wall of wine. I'm telling you, but you got the knives. You got the we could we could collaborate. You know, if you weren't literally on the West Coast right now, we could yeah, literally we do, could. Some, we could do some damage. Um, that's yeah. for sure. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to be said about you know. I just think our profession, right, what we do, and just overcoming adversity. I think I, I think you hit the nail right on the head. And chef, this this really goes without saying. Um, but we are so proud of what, you, um, what you've accomplished since uh, graduating with your culinary degree back in 1994. And, um, and 10 years later, 
uh, getting getting that honorary doctorate, which is really like a dream, right? It's absolutely, I mean, how telling of, of an of a individual you are and how amazing you are to for your alma mater after 10 years out of school to say, you know what, we're going to give you an honorary doctorate. So, and, and it happened. And I remember like it was yesterday, it happened at my commencement. And what a gift for, for me to see you speak at my graduation. But Chef, what, a, what an awesome, awesome feat. And um, we're just so proud of you. So really my question, my first question for you is what did that culinary degree mean to you? And what did, um, you know, what did it do for you when you were starting your career and, and really building your brand? Um, well, I, I, I want to, uh, you know, uh, answer this question along with all of my fellow graduates that are on with us tonight. I, I think there's almost 80 people joining us for our, our conversation. So I just want to say welcome to everybody that's with us tonight. And, uh, and I, I, I have sort of a, a, a shared sense of place with everybody that's come to the Johnson Wells experience because you know, it's really given me the foundation of who I am as a person, right? So when I was, uh, you know, 19, 20, uh, you know, 21 years old, kind of uh, uh, finishing up not only a culinary degree, but a business degree from hotel restaurant management in Charleston, and then moving to New York City right after that, like my degree gave me a sense of purpose, right? Uh, you know, I was just, I, I was a, a kid who had a very normal uh, upbringing, you know, nothing particularly special. I grew up in a, a cul-de-sac of a cul-de-sac in upstate South Carolina. And, uh, and I, I knew I, I, I really loved and was very passionate about cooking at a young age, but felt like I, I needed that cosign. I really needed that experience. And I needed that, that, uh, you know, that, the, the shoulders and building blocks to stand on to kind of take me to the next level. And, and, and I got to tell you, like, you know, walking into, uh, you know, uh, a restaurants, you know, the three, four star restaurants in New York City back in the early 90s and mid 90s when I when I finally got there and landed, um, having degree from John Swells University meant I knew something right and meant I belonged in the room. And, and that's what I always really loved. I, I felt like re regardless of where I was, I've traveled the world of, you know, I've staged in, in, in several countries in Europe and I've, I've worked and shot and filmed all over the world. Um, my, uh, my degrees that I have from Johnson Wales University um, says that I belong, right? It really, and that, that's what I've always really felt. Like it gave me a sense of purpose, gave me a sense of place, it gave me a sense of character. Uh, and uh, I mean, I'm a Johnny Whaler, right? Like through <laughs> and through. And, and, and never lost that. And, and to me, like, that's what I really love about the character building exercise of kind of going through, you know, the, the education process and then being able to walk into, um, you know, different business situations around the world and, and just feel like you deserve a seat at the table, right? You belong there. It gives you a, a, a chance to uh, work with any group in any room in any hotel. And it says that you have the foundation and the building blocks to be a team play team member and a leader and, and, and you deserve to be there. My guy, I cannot agree with you more. You know, I say this, you know, and a lot of the times when I, you know, I'm at Johnson Rose, right. I'm, I'm here. When I pick up the phone, like just leading with that conversation sometimes, Hey, I'm calling from Johnson Rose university. I mean, I, I'll tell you what people perk up and listen, you know, so you're absolutely right. And, and, and it is it to celebrate that chef. I just I thank you so much. Um, you have a production company, right? We, we talked about that. Um, you're an author. Uh, 16 books, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, TV celebrity and chef restaurant tour. How do you develop a brand that encompasses all of those areas? Well, I, I think you got to take it one step at a time, right? Like you have to have the foundation of a, a, um, a you know, a, a sense of, of accomplishment that you're, you've done something or you're moving into um, some position. I, 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 one of my favorite ways to describe the, the, um, the ambition versus ability, right? So when you walk out of school, um, you may have a really high level of ambition, but your ability may be here, right? So yeah. I think it's up to you for the next, like, say, 10 years or so fresh out of college is to take your ability and start moving up to with, with your sense of taste, right? Yeah. Your sense of place and where you want to grow and take your ability and move it up to meet your ambition. And I think when you get to the place where, you know, you, you've, you've accomplished a few things, you've had a successful career, you've got some good write-ups, like you have some sort of, you know, uh, uh, level of accomplishment. And, and that, that's what I think your twenties are all about too, just right. There's a really good opportunity just to, 
just to just to you know get in the, get in the mud, right? And and just just work really really hard, make a name for yourself, um, have some experiences, travel, and then I think when you when you get into your 30s, you really start to take all those. Uh, experiences that you've collected and you really start to turn them into something, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what, what I do for a living and, and with our team, our production team, um, is we just sort of celebrate the good life, right? Like these are things that we we know really, really well, which I think is super important to be able to communicate um, with, with brands that you want to work with and your brand yourself is just to have a sense of authenticity, right? What you're doing specifically speaks to you and, and you know what you're talking about and you can look into a camera and, you know, walk up to a table of ingredients and start just really riffing on, you know, great dishes and be able to cook and share experiences. And, and so I, I think it takes a little bit of time to kind of build up to that before you really have a brand per se. And, and everything that you're doing, you know, by the time you kind of get out of college and you start to kind of build yourself up to where you have enough momentum and win in your sales, you're just collecting experiences. And I think that's probably potentially the, the, uh, a, you know, a very good, formidable, important part of your life is just to collect experiences on the way up, right? So when you get to that point where you're in the driver's seat um, in a production company and you're talking to a camera and you're sharing the, your knowledge and you're cooking, you, you can tell people where you've been and you have really interesting stories to share, right? So I think that's really important too. So those are the building blocks before you kind of get to the point where you have a brand that is sort of yourself as a brand, right? So, so what what we do in now is, you know, we we have two companies, right? We have a hospitality division, and and so that that sort of encompasses our our food and beverage world, our restaurants. Mm -hmm. So I have Wayfair Tavern, uh, which is our flagship restaurant uh, in the financial district in San Francisco, and then we also have a new steakhouse that we're developing uh, in, in about to open uh, with the, the Golden State Warriors a little bit later this year. We're about a year delayed because of COVID, but it's going to happen. The place looks amazing. And then we also have uh, our kind of grab and go concept uh, at the San Francisco International Airport that's been around for eight years, uh, which is really nice as well. And that's called Tyler Florence Fresh. And that's just rotisserie chicken and, you know, California side dishes and, and really a picnic at the airport. So, so we're, we're kind of collecting ourselves on the way up. So we have our food and beverage world, and then we have um, our production company side, and that's Monarch Collective. And Monarch Collective, we really do th three things. We make movies, we make television, and then we're also a full stack advertising agency specializing in short form digital content for social media, right? So, so we, we've, uh, we've, we've made one movie. We have uh, two scripts in the works right now, one at Netflix and one we're developing. And uh, we're shooting television with Food Network all the time. And then with our branding work, which has been, you know, our, um, our, our, our bread and butter for the last year, to be honest with you, um, we've been sh uh, shooting commercials for, you know, some of the biggest brands in America, like Red Bull and Venetian Hotel. We just signed a, a production deal with Alaskan Seafood, uh, developing content for them. So we're filming commercials specifically designed for social media, right? And a lot of these things just sort of celebrate the good life, right? And, and so we've had, um, you know, we, we, uh, my entire career up to this moment has been collecting bits and pieces and learning as you go and, and borrowing from, you know, your, your, uh, your colleagues as you sort of move up, right? Like the 25 years on television with Food Network has given me, you know, a lifetime of knowledge on how television production works. And, you know, in Johnson and Wales has given me all the business tools to learn how to, you know, develop and run restaurants successfully so I can um, manage the day to day, but manage a team that manages the day to day. So we can really kind of do all these things gracefully in a way that really kind of feels fluid. And it takes a while to get there. It really does. It doesn't happen overnight. And they say overnight success takes 10 years. I think it's more like 15 right? It takes a while to get there. So you got to be patient on the way up, right? And then kind of once you get to the point where, you, where, where you're um, what I like to call flying at cruising altitude, right? You can, you, can really, you can really flex your muscle from a creative standpoint because all of your basic groundwork has been laid, right? All the fundamentals are there. Your businesses are built, like everything's flowing to the point where, you know, we, right now, especially in our restaurants, I'm really sort of the calibrator, Right. I make sure that our brand is on brand and our chefs are producing fantastic content and we're growing as a company and, uh, and we're hiring. And, and I really like to kind of get in the nuts and bolts of the financial forensics of P&Ls, which I, I feel like is 
you know, a newfound skill, right, in a way. Um, but it's one that I just, I absolutely love because I think there's a lot of, lots of solutions and opportunities and, and, and dive into those like really kind of precious meetings. And then on the creative side, we, we're just shooting better content every day. Like we're, we're you know, we're, we're an award-winning uh, uh, production house. And, uh, and, and every, every video, every contract, every, every pitch meeting, we're just getting sharper and better. Uh, and, and so it, it just feels like we, we've, um, you know, we're riding the momentum of kind of what we're doing. And I, I think what we're doing is re- literally our best work. And that's all you can ever ask for is just to be a little better tomorrow than where you are today uh, from a creative standpoint, from a leadership standpoint, from, you know, from a development standpoint. So it takes a while to kind of get to where you want to be. And, and so having a production company is a great goal, right? To kind of take it back to what I was saying earlier. My, uh, my ambitions early on were very, very high, right? My ambitions. It's taken mm. me a long time to get my ability up to meet my ambitions where I can walk the walk and talk the talk and deliver world-class wow. programming and world-class restaurants. And now I just feel like we're, we, we've never been better. Wow. So I need a t-shirt that says ability and ambition, number one. I mean, I'm right. <laughs> I'm completely inspired. Ability, yeah, you're, when, when your ability meets your ambitions, then, then you've made it. My God, that that was absolutely amazing. I cannot wait for you to be our entrepreneur in residence. And when you tell that story uh, to the students, I'm telling you right now, I mean, I, I got, I kind of got chills, man. <laughs> um, authenticity, that's another huge trigger. Um, I wrote that down immediately. You know, I think that that's so important, right? Just being authentic, you know, and, and, just, and just being yourself. You know, people need to see you for who you are. Um, and I think that's so important. Um, thank you. Uh, so much. So speaking of brand, right, this, this question is really kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, Johnson & Wales uh, recently announced the evolution of the College of Culinary Arts to become the College of Food Innovation and Technology, um, which builds upon our expertise to explore how food impacts people, communities, and economies. CFIT, the College of Food Innovation and Technology, will educate and prepare new generations of culinary and food leaders. What do you think the impact of this decision will be? It's a big one. <laughs> And, and you know what? I could not be more excited for the evolution and development of John Wells University, right? So what we do for a living is we problem solve yeah. and, and we feed humanity at a really, really like high and wide level, right? So, so you, you want to produce graduates who are not only the best chefs yeah. in America, you want to produce graduates who are the biggest problem solvers in the world, considering that food and resources, without a doubt, will be a global issue that, that we'll have to solve and have to uh, develop you know, new practices and new protocol and new procedures and, and how we feed and manage our, our, the biodiversity of the world, right? From the oceans to, to farming, uh, to, to the, 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 the ecology, to, to waste, to packaging, all these things really make a gigantic difference. And I, I think if there's uh, a, a global think tank uh, you know, based out of Johnson & Wales University that's producing graduates who know how to think critically, who know how to solve and know how to ask the tough questions and know how to bring solutions for a better tomorrow. We're not just sort of, we're not just producing, you know, chefs who can, you know, cook foie gras and, and you know, and show up at events, right? We're producing the next generation of leaders and, and the, uh, the, the, the need and the necessity as a as a, um, a culinary entrepreneur are way different than they used to be, right? So now not only what we do for a living, like I'm, I'm, I, I've been on the board of directors of the San Francisco Marin Food Bank uh, for over a decade, and we've been solving hunger issues in San Francisco for quite some time. Um, I've been uh, on the ground with Jose Andreas and World Central Kitchen for the last five years on, on six or seven different deployments. Um, around, you know, uh, ha- helping people with um, who've been evacuated from fires here in Northern California, uh, from hurricanes in, in the Bahamas, right? And, and so, you know, we're, we're dealing with our ability to not just produce uh, uh, an amazing culinary experience inside of a restaurant, but we're also producing global solutions that address hunger, right, as, as, as a need. And I, I think graduates, Absolutely. you know, walking out of Johnson Wells University with such a well-rounded scope to be able to kind of think critically and think 
you know, so with your mass and class all at the same time, like you know how to produce like really kind of wonderful food from a creative standpoint, but you also know how to act like a human being and be able to take your abilities and say, okay, now can we go feed six or 7,000 people breakfast, lunch, and dinner for two or three weeks while their unfortunate community gets sort of handled and solved through yes. FEMA and give them some place to go. So they have a warm blanket and a warm, like, can you step up to the plate on that particular level and address, you know, humanitarian crises as they develop? And I, I think that's a very important uh, dynamic to be able to kind of think through. So I, I'm very, very excited about, you know, the the, the next stage of Johnson Wells University, um, stepping up and, and addressing, uh, you know, what needs to be addressed on a global level and just be there as, as a, as a, a, a global think tank. And I think it's an amazing opportunity. Gosh. Um, I could, perfect. Absolutely amazing. I, I mean, I cannot tell you how much um, that means to hear because it's exactly the sentiment that, 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 that we share here at the college at the university, the college of food and innovation technology is to create problem solvers, right? We know that food is the one thing we all do, right? It's the one thing that make the kind of, links us all as human beings and to, um, and, and some of us have too much, some of us don't, some of us don't have enough. And to solve those problems all in, and everything in between um, is exactly our mission, exactly our vision and what we, and what we want to do. So thank you. For we, that. We, 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 we possess what will be considered a superpower. We know how to feed people at scale. I, I completely agree. And thank you for everything that you've done for, um, I've spent a lot of time in California, um, uh, 15 years out there. Um, in another capacity, executive chef of the flavor experience. Um, but you know what you did for the folks that that were affected by the wildfires is is is, is just admirable above above and beyond. So I just want to thank you personally for for all you did uh, to help. Um, that 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 is it's just it pulls on my heartstrings, chef. So um, thank you for that. And I got here's a here, here's a great question. This is probably this is like the, this is like the question that everyone says like what's your favorite thing to cook? But um I'm we're, in, we're interested. We're, I, get, I, I, get, I get that I've, I've, I've had that a thousand times. <laughs> I just lean on Italian. I'm like yeah bolognese right. whatever. Exactly. Um, but uh, fried chicken. What have you learned from your journey as an entrepreneur? What do you what do you wish that you knew when you first started your career? Right? Like that that's one of those questions like what 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 did, what do you know now that you wish you knew then or something? Well, you know, I, I think you have to take the successes and you have to take the failures in life. And I think you have to give each bucket um, a, a lot of weight, right? Because not everything works out the way you want it to, but sometimes the failures, how you come out of that and, and auto correct your, you know, your, your, your position, your pitch, oh yourself, you know, like, like your, 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 your attitude. I mean, it just could be how you kind of walk into a room and like, like to be very, become more self-aware as, as an adult. Right. I, I think those things yeah. are really, really critical. So the way I, I see it, like there's, there's no such thing as failure, right? There's no such thing as failure. You either win or you learn. You either win the situation or you learn, and then you, you, and if you, if you address those situations correctly, you'll be given the roadmap to get right back on course, right? And so I, I, I've always been um, uh, fascinated with success stories or roadmaps to success because they're, it's not linear, right? It's really more like this, right? Yeah. Until you kind of get to the place where it's like, okay, now, now I feel like I've succeeded for now where I am in my life and, and we'll sort of see where it goes. And, and so like, I, I, I think that, um, um, you know, everybody has those, those sort of subtle regrets in life. Like maybe I should have listened. Maybe I should have applied myself more. Maybe I should have, you know, like, um, you know, um, been more proactive on, on how, you know, professional I, I could have been or should have been. And, and I, I think it's important. I mean, I've been fired, right? I've been fired from restaurant jobs early in, 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 in my career. And then kind of walking away from those situations, kind of asking yourself why, uh, you know, who, you know, I, I, maybe I shouldn't have been late. Right. I think that's really important. Um, <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should have been, you know, so all these like little details start to stack up and you, you begin to own those. Right. I think it's really important to kind of own those subtle, 
you know, um, uh, issues that you begin to kind of autocorrect and, and become more professional and more uh, uh, intuitive and with introspective, right? Like you really become very incredibly self-aware. So I, I think a lot of those things that um, I always kind of take away, like I own you know, our successes and I own our failures because I, I think our failures, um, uh, because I, I think um, success is built upon the pillar of failures, sure. right? Like when Absolutely. you fail, and you come back stronger next time, and you come back stronger next time. That um, that sense of just resilience, right? That that backbone, that having your back against the wall, where you don't really know what you're going to do next, and you have to like listen to your internal mechanisms to think, through, okay, how are we going to get out of this one, <laughs> right? Yeah. How are we going to win? What are we going to do about it? And and those are the strongest uh, uh, survival skills that you could ever own and so i i yeah. think in a way i i um i appreciate um uh the the opportunities that life has presented me on the way up uh to to become just a and and sometimes those life lessons can be a little painful but on the way up you learn about them and yeah. then you're you're uh you know like like i always tell kids like you know like you, you there for every mile of road you lay there's two miles of ditch right <laughs> Yeah. For every mile of the road you lay, yeah. there's two miles of ditch on either Absolutely. side, right? Absolutely. And and if, if we can just keep the next generation out of the ditch as much as possible, you know, and to be able to take our life lessons of where we've kind of come through, you know, the highs and the lows, and be able to edit that down, right? And kind of you know maybe put some bumpers up a little bit, right? Where they can yeah. learn how to grow. And and so I, I I think owning that and then sharing that knowledge onto the next generation, I think to me kind of feels like where I want to be right now. And fantastic. So failure is crippling. It is, it's a crippling thing. And to, and to instill that um, at this level, as an 18, 19, 20 year old, you know, at, at school to instill. Fa what failure, you failure can be quite crippling. It really, it really, it really can be. And, and so, and, and you can't let that happen to you, right? So when someone right. tells you no, right, they're telling you you're not ready yet. They're not right. telling you no forever. Sure. And they're not telling you you don't belong there. They're telling right. you you're not ready now. Exactly. So you have to take those opportunities and really kind of listen to read between the lines, right? Like Absolutely. if you had the ambition and the gumption just to be in the room and to apply yourself to that particular position of what you want to do, again, it's it's um, ambition and ability, right? You're applying yeah. for these, you're yeah. applying for these positions that might be a little over your head from an ability standpoint, but you just keep plowing ahead. You exactly. just keep checking away one step at a time. And when you get to the point where you feel like you have equilibrium between your ambition and your ability, then you feel like, okay, I'm here. I've oh, made it. I, I love it. I absolutely do. Chef, we're going to pivot. And then we're going to, I have one question for you. We're going to pivot towards a um, uh, question really about journey, about, you know, kind of some adversity through COVID. Um, then we're going to turn it over to the, to the, um, to the guests to, to ask some questions, but there's a saying, never let good crisis go to waste. Um, you've mentioned uh, many times that building media platforms, content and partnerships during these times uh, proving, have proven critical these times, the pandemic is what I'm referring to. Uh, can you share that journey with us, right? Um, the, the, you know, we're, we're about a year out, right? Say about a year and a month of, you know, when all of our lives changed. So what is that, what did that journey look like uh, for you? Well, so I, I just turned 50 this year, right? So um, in, in 2008, as, as a young man who had just moved to California and and really just, I was just kind of all in on this big West Coast move, you know, growing up uh, in South Carolina, moving to New York and really kind of having um, a, a, an establishment in New York City, working with Food Network, building uh, like my, my restaurant persona as a New Yorker. And then moving to California as the economic downturn of 2008 hit, that was devastating, right? That to me, like, wow, that really, really hurt. And that took us a long time because like Food Network, I, I remember the, the president of Food Network coming to my dress room and saying, I'm sorry, we're going to have to cancel three seasons of your contract just because we don't really have okay. advertising dollars to pay for it, right? And, and so, you know, all of a sudden we had this kind of like robust, but relatively thin business model that that we didn't you know we just assumed life was good yesterday 
and life is yeah. good today, that means life is going to be good tomorrow. Forever, yeah. We, we just have this like, okay, let's just go. Another year, another season, another cookbook deal, another, you know, two dozen public, big public appearances a year. Let's just kind of keep the party going. And then when that went away in 2008, that was terrifying. Oh my gosh. We didn't know what to do, right? We fired all of our staff, burned through all of our savings. You know, uh, you know, it, 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 was, it, it was really, really tough. But it's that muscle memory of having gone through that in 2008 that I think propelled us this past year in 2020 and in 2019, first part of 2020, to not panic, yeah. right? That was the first thing we did is just not panic, right? So I, I think it was critical for us to kind of think through what we did have, what we could do, what we could do without, right? And how and what's the path forward? And to be able to kind of plan and, and, and take not only you know myself, but my family, my lovely wife and our children to be able to kind of manage that as, as the core unit that holds everything together yeah. and then kind of move that into us as a business on how am I gonna keep, keep the lights on, you know, and not only in our restaurant, but also our production company, like what, what are we gonna do? Yeah. And so we, we just sort of looked internally, you know, we uh, had a couple of meetings on, on you know, wh what, what can we do to pitch? Who can we talk to? How can we pivot? And, and I, I think it's really, really important to be able to create a diversified portfolio with streams of revenue that don't come from one place, right? And, and that, so, so if, if something ever feels, you, you never want anybody to firmly have both hands on the rug of which you stand, sure. ever. You want to be able to have one foot on that rug yeah. and one foot on another one, right? <laughs> and that right. way, if something else kind of goes away, you've got something else, you know, you've got, you got a healthy investment portfolio, or if you've got, you know, if you've got, you know, uh, um, um, an investment in a restaurant, or if you've got something, something else, that's not just sort of a, a paycheck, right? And right. again, it takes a while to get there. It's not, it's a lot easier said than done, but it takes a while to get there. But what we learned from 2008, pushing to 2020 is to not panic. Right. Nice. Think about think about your partnerships and what you do have. Um, and then to know that, you know, we as culinarians, right? Mm -hmm. And the hospitality division, we're the last people to ever get kicked off the island. Right? <laughs> yeah, we gotta feed everybody. <laughs> we're, we're we're the last people, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody else is gonna get kicked off the island before we do because we know how to feed people, right? We know how to we know how to give love, right? We know sure. how to just sort of express that sort of that warmth in a way like we're so we're, we're what we do for a living. Um, in a way, I'm, I'm not saying it's recession proof, but but we're re recession resilient, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because we're we're that people want to have a good time with what we know how to do in the yeah. good times, and then and and then when times aren't so great, you know, there's nothing more comforting than be able to share great recipes and you know sourdough bread, mm -hmm. banana bread, chili, all these <laughs> things that like yeah. people were really kind of getting into and yeah. and and. Uh, 2020, we had an answer for that, right? We had an answer for that. And so, so when, when people were going, okay, you know, we, everyone is, is not going out, they're, they're going in, it's sort of an internal thing. Uh, what do you have for us, right? I'm like, oh my God, we have a production company <laughs> yeah. that, can produce, that can produce produce uh, in-home cooking classes today. Like we can do this today. And I remember our first couple of classes, we launched one on YouTube uh, j just to kind of, you know, g get the kinks out and realize what we wanted to do and figure out how many cameras we had or how we could actually pull it off. So between uh, March of, of uh, 2020 and kind of where we are today, we've produced over 100 live cooking classes and, you know, yeah. and taught a few thousand people yeah. how to really kind of make fantastic food at home. And wow. it's been a really fabulous journey. It's like so much so that pandemic aside, I don't think we'll ever not do this now. Like, I, I'm, exactly. I'm really excited about it. Because like, like we, we, I had this studio, right? We have a production team. We were, you know, shooting television with Food Network. And, and all of a sudden when that sort of got pivoted and shifted towards the end of 2020, while, you know, we were waiting for a dip in COVID numbers, we were waiting for sort of sanctioned COVID protocol to take effect where people knew what to do. And in the meantime, we just kept on. We just, we created an economy out of nothing. And, and so we, when you're, and, and the, 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 that's the glorious thing about getting older is, is, you know, what, well, you know what your abilities are, right? You know what you can right. actually pull off and what you can do. And, and when you have your back against the ropes and right. you feel like, okay, 
I really don't know what to do next. I promise you that's when you're going to come up with your most creative, right? Most right. successful concepts. So being wow. in that position is actually healthy. It's actually good for you. So I, I lied. I have one more question. <laughs> um, you shared with us that turning 50 had an impact um, on you. Um, and, and you began to think about, you know, who you are as a person. So uh, again, another one of those, those questions, um, what do you want your legacy to be, Chef? You know, um, I got a chance to interview Jacques Pepin uh, two, wow. maybe three years ago. Uh, he was on a book tour here in Northern California. Wow. And it was just Jacques and I on stage for an hour and a half. And I, got, I, I went back and reread his biography and uh, pulled down every cookbook I had. And I just want to kind of get to know the guy um, better. And, and to, you know, everyone knew and really wanted to talk to Jacques about his uh, experiences cooking with Julia Childs sure. and, and Jacques and Julia and what that was all about. But honestly, his career before that was way more interesting and way more fascinating. So I actually spent the entire interview talking about his life up till Jock and Julia, because I, I feel like that's what everybody knew, right? But but the fact that this guy had cooked for, you know, seven um, uh, presidents of, yep. of France, um, mm -hmm. had uh, retooled one of the largest hotel groups, jo uh, um, Howard Johnson's in America, on how to produce really great food locally, right? Um, had written so many books. I mean, had, had you know, had pioneered so many uh, revolutionary things that, that feel so common today, right? Um, sure. To me, I, I just felt like this is my ultimate role model on who do I want to be. I just want to be Jacques Pepin. <laughs> oh, my, oh my God. We are so I lucky. just want to, I just want to be Jacques. I want to be, and, and, and I don't know if you guys follow him on Instagram right now, but he has like, you know, his, his, his studio is very simple and it's just him. Like I, I watched yesterday and he, he, uh, I did this really beautiful dish where he took clams and popped them in the microwave and he made this little like lime butter to go on top of it. But you could tell it's just all the passion, all the knowledge, all the know-how. He's sitting there in his house in, in Connecticut, still inspired with food, you know, and, 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 and still just out there on a daily basis, just sharing goodwill and just cooking for everybody. And to me, if I could be anybody, I would want to be Jacques Pepin. Oh my God, that is absolutely amazing. We are so lucky to have him so close to us here in Rhode Island. Um, his son-in-law is with us as a faculty member who's the executive director of uh, the Jacques Pepin Foundation. And what, whatever we can do uh, as, a, as a university to, to support the foundation, we, we absolutely will do. And uh, anytime uh, they come to ask, because you're right. I mean, and I look back at these, you know, at, at his life, his career, as, as I do to yours. And I go, oh my gosh, you know, like I remember you walking down the uh, procession at my graduation, we're all high-fiving each other because it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't like an invitation, like Tyler Florence will be here. It was a complete surprise. And, you know, just to, to think back to then and just how, where did, where was my career going? Where, where, you know, I, I'm listening to, which is one of the best addresses I've ever listened to, listening to this. And that's my springboard into what I do next, right? It is to leave graduation, having listened to you and, um, and paying now, paying that forward to our students. Um, so, um, but if I, I would be remiss if I don't take a second to at least thank you uh, before the before this is over. Thank you for that. Thank you for for just being an absolute inspiration. Um, we are going to jump over to the to the Q and A. We're going to let some uh, some of our guests uh, interact if that's okay. Um, yeah, and, and I, I just I just, I just want to add to that real fast because it it, it was an, it was a huge honor. Um, I was a, I was the first person in my family to ever graduate from college. Wow. So, so to not only, you know, graduate with a, you know, a culinary degree and then a business degree, but my third degree to be a doctorate, to be an honorary doctorate. I, I remember what I, I said uh, in, in my, um, um, my, my speech, like, um, I am here on the front line to let you know what you're, you're about to step into, right? Yeah. And, and I, I just felt so great to sharing that knowledge because like, that's what it's all about. Yes. Right. If you get the opportunity to go up to the top, it's your obligation to send the elevator right back down again for the next absolutely. generation. And, and, and that, that's what I'm excited about. Absolutely. You are absolutely right. Um, and that's why this what, you know, at least what I do here in education is, is why I get up and, and come back every single day. Send the elevator. That's awesome. Chef, first question from uh, from our guests. Um, have you ever dealt with burnout or uh, been in a rut? If so, uh, what have you done to combat that? 
I sure have a couple of times. As a matter of fact, I, I remember I was the executive chef of cafeteria in New York City, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and I, I just kind of hit this like thing, and probably in my my mid to late twenties, right? So I started out, you know, working in restaurants when I was fifteen years old. Mm -hmm. I started washing dishes when I was fifteen in the nicest restaurant in my hometown of South Carolina. I mean, I went to culinary school and I moved straight to New York, and I was on the line at some of the best restaurants in New York in, in like the late 80s, early 90s. I'm sorry, late, late 90s, early 2000s. And, uh, and, and I remember when I was like 26, 27, and I had not had, um, I, uh, I, I had had either um, Thanksgiving or Christmas off, but never both in a year, yeah. right? And, 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 and every, um, you know, weekend, you know, the rest of the world were out sort of relaxing. And that was sort of our ramp up period. And so having like an odd day off of having Monday, Tuesday off, mm -hmm. but then working Friday, Saturday and Sunday, also yeah. being an executive chef for restaurant, that means like, if somebody doesn't show you're, you're in, right? Yeah. That, that's yeah. what it's you, you got to show up. So sometimes you would go, you know, uh, three, four, five, sometimes six weeks with a day off until you kind of recalibrate the system and rehire. And I, I really had it. I mean, and so, so to me, like that, that's when you um, really take stock in your career, figure out what you want to do. And life is short, right? And sometimes when you kind of hit these walls professionally, it's really like sort of a, you're more of a survival uh, instinct when you feel like you've got to go, right? Yeah, sure. I just got to go. I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know why I'm leaving. But I and this has been fun, but I've got to go just do something else and, and to know that you always can. Right. Sure. Because what we do for a living right in the hospitality world, there will always be a job for you. Right. There's always a thing. Sure. So so the the I always tell like really like young people, you know, like young, skinny cooks. And I'm like, <laughs> have you ever seen Ratatouille? <laughs> They're like, I'm like, yeah, of course. I'm like, it's the best food film ever made. You got to go see Ratatouille. I'm like, you need to be Linguini, right? You got to <laughs> yeah. just go knock on the door mm -hmm. and like take your knife roll back and just, just commit and just kind of go and just have another experience, right? Yeah. So if, if you if you can do it and you kind of get to this point in your career and, 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 you know, if you have family and children, that's a different consideration. But if you don't yet, there's nothing holding you back. You should go to Spain. You should go to Japan. You should go to London. You should go just live and, and, and just kind of figure yourself out and, and sort of answer that the call of the wild, right? And just go fill the tank up one more time uh, from, uh, from an inspiration standpoint or start writing a book or, or you know, just go on some sort of interesting sabbatical, right? There's, there's sure. ways you can go do that. Um, you know, go, go cook for a camp in the summer with kids and just sort of just take, take a break and do something else. You have a magical skill that everybody needs on a daily basis and everybody will pay you for, for the rest of your career. So mm -hmm. if you feel like you're stuck in a rut in a situation that's not healthy for you or for them or whatever the situation is, literally today is the day you say, I've had my last bad day yeah. and you step out of that line. And then tomorrow you step on a different line and you just sort of embrace the change. It may yeah. feel chaotic for a little bit, but then literally a week into it, two weeks into it, you're like, this is the best move I've ever made. I'm yeah. so happy and I'm free. And you can always go back to that. You can always go back to that, right? But sure. sort of listen to yourself. You only get one, you know, one trip around the merry go -round. You get one trip, you yeah. get one lifetime. Don't waste a second of it. Don't waste, don't waste anything. Listen to yourself. If you felt it's time to go do something different with your life, go do it. Just go do it. Don't apologize. I love it. Um, chef. So, um, little, there's actually a decent segue uh, to this next question. It's a little long. So let me, uh, let me read it off to you. Um, have, how have you managed having a family life on top of growing your abilities, um, in order to reach your ambitions? One of the hardest things to do is find time for others outside of the restaurant or hotel that you're working in. Do you have recommendations on how to balance being able to have both? Well, so, so the, the, you know, there's, it, it really depends on kind of where you are in your life and your life journey and kind of what you're looking for, right? So I'm, I'm happily married. Um, I have three beautiful children. Uh, my wife and I have been married for 15 years. Um, this is my second marriage. Uh, my first marriage, I, I got married 
probably too young. Um, but um, what came of that is, is a beautiful child, right? We have my oldest son is uh, 25 years old. And he is yeah. the love of my life, the brightest guy in the world, like the guy I want to hang out with. I, I'm really loving having an adult relationship with my child. And so, so I, I you know, you, you learn a lot about yourself as you kind of grow up into situations when it comes to being responsible and, and knowing what the value of a great partnership, right? The, the value of a great life partnership. And you, you have to, when you, when you get to the place where you feel like you've got it, and this is you, and, and, and life is really, really great, you, you, you begin to grow with that person and realize that that one human being that you're currently sharing a life path with will be there for you and with you through the yeah. best times and the worst times, and you have that that fallback, right? So, so having the strength and knowing that you always have an, an, an amazing support system, right. uh, it, like with you, it gives you the courage to go do great things, that you always have a support system, right? Your family is number one, your children are number one, that's the most important priority for anybody as an adult, right? You got yeah. your home base has to be the nicest, most beautiful thing you could ever think about, right? And then it gives you the strength to go out and do big, bold things, right? You are a product of your path. You're a product of your path. If your path is messy, if your path is rocky, if you've burned a couple of bridges, <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> like if you make, if you if you if you if you have a messy path, that that is the route that's going to get you to this next thing that probably won't be pretty either. So it's very important to kind of live your life in a way that you are proud of your path, right? You're proud of your life. You're proud of your children. You're proud of your accomplishments wow. because that will give you the character to to go on and do great ambitious things, right? So so I I, I love my wife. She is the most amazing human being. And, and, and what we, what we like to say is like, she, uh, I make the money and she makes the memories, right? Mm -hmm. So she creates a really beautiful, wonderful, uh, well-run, well-run household, uh, which is not easy because we have, you know, not only three beautiful children, but we got, we have five goats and we just got a baby pig and oh, we have, wow. yeah, we, we have three dogs and we have a kind of a crazy house with like kids and kind mm -hmm. of coming and going all the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, but, she, but she runs it with, with such grace and, and she, lets me be me for a living right so we we just have this understanding and and uh and we we're we're an amazing team together and uh we we'll she is my life partner so right. I, I just think it's really important to be able to make sure you that 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 is an established you know and sometimes it's not you got to work on that right like th those are the yeah. things that you really have to kind of commit to right like mm -hmm. sometimes if you have to kind of auto correct or, or what i like to say like the the, the comet tail of your youth right like <laughs> hanging out with your friends, right? Going out, like sometimes those things get in the way with what ultimately is the most sure. important part of your life. And that's to make sure that your home relationship is just beautiful and fluid and calm and stable, right? So, so like self-correct your life path and it'll give you the courage and the ability and the backbone to go do great things. So I, so that, that is, is um, probably one, one of my greatest accomplishments is my relationship with my wife. My gosh, I mean, whoever answered that question, that was like the best answer you could have ever gotten. So, so thanks for the question and thank you so much for that answer. And uh, it, it, it truly, truly is the is the truth. It truly is. It's a team, right? And and every and everyone on a team and every and everyone in a band and you know everyone has a position to play. Um, and and communication is 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 paramount. Um, so, um, chef, do you feel food trucks will? Uh, maintain their current popularity even once restaurants reopen at full capacity and what's the most important thing to know when getting into uh, this area i'm going to assume they mean in getting into food trucks the food trucks so yeah. i i think food trucks are are really really interesting right i always have and and i always will um so uh in 2009 2010 when we put together the pilot for the great food truck race. Mm -hmm. um, um, it, it, it was it was a tiny coastal niche, right? And it was really just like a, what they call the roach coach out by the airport, roach right? Coach, or by the yeah. construction site. Mm -hmm. It was nothing you'd ever want to eat off of, very dodgy, you know, just like kind of <laughs> kind of gross. 
I remember doing the Today Show and doing Good Morning America and saying, hey, the great food truck race. It's like, you know, food trucks meets Cannonball Run, and we're going to go. They're like, ew. <laughs> but, but now, I, I got to tell you, like, we, we've hit the gas. Like, it, it's one of my um, most, um, um, uh, like, like, where I feel we've accomplished a lot, opening up the world to lowering the bar of getting into the food and beverage business, right? So right now there's over 40,000 active food trucks in America, right? Wow. And I'm not saying we invented it, but I'm certainly saying we gassed it. We gassed oh, yeah. it hard. And we, we, uh, we, we've proven um, uh, the, both the supply and the demand for the model, sure. right? We've proven that if you can really hustle hard, you can put six figures a year in your pocket. It's basically the restaurant without the dining room. Right. And so so your neighborhood, your community, your park, your downtown business area, wherever you want to be is your dining room. But you could still charge a fairly competitive amount for that grab and go thing. Right. Is that twelve dollars? Is that 18 bucks? You can kind of get a really nice uh, you know, per person ticket price for that grab and go thing. And if you can do a few hundred covers a day, all of a sudden, wow, we're kind of making some money and you do it in a very refined way. That, get, that is benign, right? So if you um, want to uh, get into the food and beverage business, um, it's a great place to just sort of get the idea. Right. It's a great place to just sort of flex your creativity, get your idea out for 25,000 bucks, 30,000 bucks. You can lease a food truck, get a food handler's permit, um, you know, skin it, go to Costco, get some stuff, and then you're in business the next week. Start a little social media uh, business, you know, little game going on get a nice sort of web presence yeah. if you need to. Um, but you, you could literally take um, a concept and uh, with nine out of 13 winners in the great food truck race, nine of them have gone on to open successful brick and mortar businesses. Really? Right. Nine of them. It's a pretty good, pretty good, uh, you know, number right there. Right. So, Absolutely. so my point of this, like, so, so if you, you know, listen, I'm famous raising money for restaurants is hard. Right. <laughs> And so, so the, and the, and the death rate of restaurants, right? Like, so like, you know, uh, seven out of 10 restaurants never see their second birthday, right? right. Especially e even in this economic environment, right? Those are very real statistics. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, have a place to go practice your craft, make some money, you know, develop that next big, great sushi Rito concept you've always heard, wanted to make, right? Wouldn't it be cool if we made a crow nut? Wouldn't it be great if we like smash these two ideas together and make something really kind of new and very innovative? The food truck is a place you want to do that, right? That's sure. a place you want to go. And if you fail, who cares, right? If you fail, you mm -hmm. haven't lost $4 million. You've there lost you a little bit of money, but you could literally reskin it and go do something tomorrow with the same truck and no one's gonna know, right? Exactly. So it just kind of gives you this place to kind of you know, like like fail up, fail forward, <laughs> right? Wow, and, yeah. and just kind of grow, grow, just grow with it, right? Like you've sure. got the best idea in the world that nobody's into. You're gonna figure that out in the food truck before you're gonna waste $4 million, you know, kind of getting together. And also you're gonna have this really amazing proof of concept. If you get it right, if you nail it, if you, you you're, you're gonna you're gonna have this amazing proof of concept, you're gonna bring your entire social media network with you, and 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 you're you're gonna have a really successful business model to go pitch investors with, right? So I think it's a great place to go. I think it's a great place to just get your leg into the industry, and and even if you have an established business, Eleven Madison Park, one of the greatest restaurants in the world, just in New York City. Just, just that. announced that they launched a food truck, right? It's truck. cool, right? Yeah. It's cool. It's it is literally, you know, having what that I like to call cell division, right? So you're yeah. one restaurant and then you're a restaurant and a food truck, right? And then and then you so you have something else to talk about, something else to go do, a place that you can you know, have a different version. Let's just say that you've got a signature item on your on your menu at your restaurant that would be a breakout hit as what they call a QSR plus, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a quick service restaurant, but at a premium. Yeah. Shake Shack is a QSR plus, right? So yes, if you've got are. one item that are like, oh my God, if we just did a restaurant and we just sold this one thing, oh my God, wouldn't it be great? Boom. Put it on a food truck, right? Yeah. Go flex your muscle and do it on a food truck. And then all of a sudden you've really got two great concepts. And and you know, if you if you kind of exist in the upper echelon of the food world, you're you're just sort of proving yourself that you can make food for the masses and do something kind of fun. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it's a, I, I strongly recommend if you're looking to diversify your restaurant uh, uh, position, but a second location 
is too expensive for whatever reason, do a food truck if you can afford it. They're a lot of fun. You can make some money and you'll definitely kind of get the word out. Yeah, I just I just saw the 11 Madison truck and it's it's gorgeous. <laughs> it's all glass. I mean, it really is. Stunning. Yeah, no, it's it really, really good. I'm, I'm not sure what to serve it on the menu, but you know, it's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Dan, Daniel's an amazing chef. Um, so, uh, chef, did, I, I, I know it's it's a, uh, just a little after eight here. But I think the conversation is 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 robust and um, I'm having a great time. You mind if I get one more question? In? Yeah, please, oh, I'm like okay. Lionel Richie. I'm here all, all my life. <laughs> I love that. All right, so um, this is this one near and dear to my heart, and I'm glad someone asked it. Um, thank you for ever asked this question. But uh, what's your advice for young chefs? That's a good one to end on. Um, I, I I think my my advice for young chefs is to take yourself incredibly seriously. Right, like don't waste a minute of your life. Don't have a clear focus on who you are and what you want to do. Start developing your own palate, start developing your own culinary point of view. Like, what do you like? Travel, soak up everything. Like, don't waste a second of your 20s. Don't wait because that's, that's, that is like your runway. That's your traction. Yeah. That's like, that's your, you're proving yourself, right? And so, you know, you, you could either spend a decade doing something unremarkable, or you could spend a decade doing something truly remarkable, and then absorbing from some of the great people in the world, absorbing from some of the best business models, really establish yourself as, as, as a great hotel operator, or a great chef, or a great restaurateur, or a great, you know, food scientist, or a, a great leader, right? So, so just take yourself incredibly seriously, and, yeah. and don't waste a minute of your time. Absolutely. Absolutely amazing. Chef, um, thank you so, so much. I mean, this is no word of a lie. That was, that was just so much fun. It was so good to, to connect with you, to connect with you. So good to see you. I can't wait to get out to SF and, and hang out. Wayfair is kind of like top of my list right now. I can't wait to come out and see you guys. And, and um, I, I can't wait to get to Providence. And I'm, I'm really excited about what we're going to be doing together, right? Yeah. I, I, I love being you know, the chef in residence and food entrepreneur in residence with Johnson Wells University. And, and, and to me, like th that's just part of what I really feel like I need to be doing right now. It's just taking... You know, all, all, all the successes, all the failures, right? The the um, the bullion bays of a very successful career, right? And then and then and then share that knowledge with people that are just really hu hungry for opportunity. And yeah. I, I I just I I can't wait to do it. And I'm uh, I'm behind the scenes on on all the planning of that, and that is going to be so much fun. I, I just I can't wait. I can't wait till next week, but the, just for yeah. the launch. But I can't wait to see what. What the student, you know, I'm, I believe in these students and I cannot wait to see what they bring to the table. I really can't. It's going to be so much fun. Um, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Awesome. Well, Chef, um, I, I can't thank you enough, um, really. And I hope you just have an awesome week. And on behalf of the university, on behalf of, uh, of the College of Food and Beige Technology, I, I, I just loved that. And um, thank you. Um, I'm going to uh, turn the program uh, back over to uh, Maureen Dumas. Thanks again, Chef. Thank you. Hey. Thank you, TJ. I would also like to thank Chancellor Rooney for being here with us tonight. Thank you to all of our JWU alumni, the Marion Gertrude, Gertrude Society members in attendance. And thank you once again to Chef Tyler Florence. We are so grateful for your generosity and commitment to give back to the university through this evening's program and for the exciting opportunity you have given to our students. Our university is strengthened by the support from all of our alumni. Alumni participation and support each and every year helps us prepare our students for lifelong success in a rapidly changing world, as we discovered this year. It also contributes to the growth of the university's reputation and shows the world we are stronger together and we are one J. Wu. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed tonight's session, A Path Forward, a forum with Tyler Florence, part of the JWU Connects family of programming, and I hope that you will join us again in the future. For a full listing of upcoming events, please join or please visit the events calendar at alumni.jwu.edu. Thank you again for your attendance, and as Tyler stated, I hope all of you have many bumpers to help you in life as you use your abilities for all of your ambitions. Have a wonderful night, and thank you, Chef Florence. My absolute pleasure. Thank you so much.